let's show a little bit of detail behind this. A supply function, again, general function written just like I did um, on the previous page. But what we could do next is we could simplify that function a little bit and make it a linear function, make it an equation of a line to make it really simple and easy to plot and to graph and to work with. Okay, and here I'm making up a very simple linear relationship introducing some of the variables that are incorporated in the supply function. So we've got the price of the product itself, one times P, it's going to affect the quantity supplied. And again, the numbers are kind of immaterial. Um, you know, the numbers are going to be kind of silly, small numbers, but that's okay. We're just trying to kind of work with the relationship here. And then the second variable I've got listed here is input prices in this equation. And saying, let's take the input prices and we'll multiply it by one half and then there's a negative relationship here, minus. So that shows that as input prices go up, the quantity supplied is going to go down. Again, the values of the parameters are kind of nonsensical, but it's giving us the direction of the effects, and that's all we really need. And then this 5 on the right-hand side is going to incorporate the number of sellers. It's going to incorporate future prices, and it's going to incorporate technology. I didn't explicitly put these down as additional variables in the linear equation. I've just lumped them all together into that, um, that intercept term, the number five, okay? So whenever we draw a supply function and you got this nice upward sloping relationship between price and the quantity supplied, we are presuming, remember, that ceteris paribus prevails, that everything else has a particular value and is being held constant when we move up and down that particular supply curve, okay? So let's plug things in. Let's say the input prices is a takes a value of 10. The 5 incorporates everything else, like I just pointed out over here. And we'll plug in values to get an equation for the supply function itself. And when we do that, we get plus P minus 1 half times 10 plus 5. That's going to reduce to P minus 5 plus 5, which is P plus 0. So get rid of that. And we end up with this equation right down here. Quantity supplied is equal to just the price. Again, the simplest supply function we could imagine or envision. But I want you to recognize that when we write this supply function down here on the bottom left, we have in mind that we've got values for the input prices and the number of sellers and the future prices and the technology. All of those are affecting the shift parameter here, which, as it turns out, is zero for the moment. Okay? So ceteris paribus prevails when we talk about a supply function and moving up and down it. Now, we could take that particular supply function, QS is equal to P, and we could plot it really easily, right? We could create a schedule, prices 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, respectively, quantity supplied, and using the, the terminology that the quantity is in millions of pounds when the price is given at a particular dollar per pound value. And so it's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 million pounds per month is what we're getting for the total quantity supplied. Now, remember from our earlier exercise when we were talking about the demand curve that we also did this exercise where we created a linear demand curve and came up with an equation of QD is equal to 40 minus P. That's what's plotted on the axis right here. And that's what's giving us the supply and demand function that we can put together. And then we're going to work with this in a, in a minute. Okay, but I want to emphasize again how the supply function shifts. So suppose other determinants change. And in that case, the other determinants, not counting input prices, is what's causing that 5 value to be true on the original supply function up above. But let's say that that supply value shifts to 10, maybe because there's a technology increase or maybe because the number of firms rises, All right? But let's change one other variable, other determinant, and let's see what happens. Now, we're going to maintain ceteris paribus. Ceteris paribus means that the input prices, for example, are going to remain fixed at 10, like they were on the previous exercise right here, okay? So that's going to remain fixed. So all we're going to do is we're going to keep that 10 fixed over here, 
and we're going to add the 10 instead of the 5, so no longer a 5, and we're going to move the 10 down here, and we're going to change the equation just a little bit. And when we do that, you're going to notice that P minus 1 half times 10, this becomes 5, this is 10, and this is a minus 5. So we end up with 10 minus 5 is equal to the 5, and this becomes our new equation for the supply function. So when we increase, technology increases, or the number of firms increase, that shift parameter is going to rise up from 0 to 5. And then when we plot it, it's going to look like this. Plotting this particular supply function next to the original, and we'll notice that now with that supply function, plug in a price of 0, we get a supply of 5 units. Plug in a price of 10, we're going to get a supply of 15 million pounds and so forth. And we can plot that, given by the green line over here, and note that it's going to be positioned to the right of the original supply function. All right? And this is what's going on in the background then. When you change a particular variable, like technology, it's going to cause a shift to the right or the left of that supply function. When you change number of sellers, it's going to shift right or left. If you change the future price, it's going to shift right or left in a particular market. Okay, but if you change the price of the product itself, you're just going to move up and down along the supply function itself, and you'll tell the story in that particular way. All right, so similar idea, shifts in supply versus shifts in demand. That's what we're going to use now to kind of talk about changes in the marketplace and what's going to happen.